Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I will go through the top 10 best rates you can farm in World of Warcraft in order to make a lot of gold. Before I start diving into this list, just a couple of points you want to consider before farming all these different rates. First of all, it's always easier to do most of these farms on a druid, so I would definitely recommend you to have a druid. You can of course use different classes, but this is, in my opinion, the best class to farm the different rates. Also, if you want to go a little bit faster, you can use some of the food buffs such as a bear tartar, it will definitely help you get a little bit of speed. You can also use some armor pieces with some speed on it if you have some, it will increase a little bit your speed again. Finally, another important thing to keep in mind, if you cannot teleport, such as for instance with Druids, uh, directly outside of the raid, what you want to do is use the custom search and you just want to start a group, join it, and then you want to exit it. And like that, you will be able in one minute to uh, go outside of the dungeon, I mean to, to be teleported outside of the raid. And again, after that, you can come back, reset, and do the farm again and again. Just before I start the video, I also just want to really stress the fact that this is my personal top 10, so I'm sure there are plenty of other raids that are very interesting, uh, but I just wanted to select 10 of these. And also, I'm going to talk a lot about transmogs in this video, so if you don't really like transmog farming, and if you think it's not something that is worth your time, then you might want to maybe try and watch another video. Okay, so let's start with number 10. And at number 10, we're going to have two raids from Cataclysm. So these two raids are going to be the Bastion of Twilight and Firelands. So these two raids are very easy to do. Uh, for both raids, all you want to do is enter, kill all the mobs that are before the first few bosses, and then exit. For Firelands, you just want to make sure to not kill Shanox. It's a boss that will just randomly spawn uh, when you kill some of the mobs and just go around the map, so make sure to not kill him. And for the Bastion of Twilight, it's really, really easy. You just want to enter, kill all the mobs in the first room, and normally after that, it will be done. So for both of these raids, you have a few items that can be very interesting. Uh, first of all, you have all the different epic BOEs. So in the Bastion of Twilight, as you can see, you have like some items that can Sell for quite a lot of gold, especially the weapons and the shoulders. And then in finance, you also have like a few patterns. And then you also have like some weapons that you can then sell for sometimes quite a lot of gold, as you can see here. Next to that, you will have a lot of raw gold. And also you will have a lot of gray and green items that you can then sell for quite a lot of gold. After that, for finance, you can also use skinning in order to like just get a little bit of like lever that you can then sell on the auction house. And finally, you want to use this potion of treasure finding in order to then get some of these tiny treasure chests. And inside these tiny treasure chests, you will get like a few gold and some materials from Cataclysm that will definitely also increase the, the amount of gold you will get. And another item that you don't want to vendor, but that you want to keep either you can sell it on the auction house or you can use it, is the Robles Bubbly Staff. This is a gray staff. And as you can see, this is one of the like requirements in order to get the Ruby Bubble Worm pet. So just keep that in mind and you might want to use this staff instead of vendoring it. Okay, so just after that, we have the Hellfire Citadel raid from Warlords of Jonair. So for this raid, it's really easy. All you want to do is go inside and kill the two first bosses and then you can kill all the different ads that are before uh, the two other bosses, Chromorg and the Hellfire Council. And then you want to wait 20 or 30 minutes in order for like all the different ads to respawn. Or if you already completed one of the quests that Khadgar will offer you, and this quest is basically asking you to kill one of the boss called Gorfin four times, you will have access to a little portal at the entrance of the raid that you can directly use to go to the upper level. And here you can kill all the different mobs, use the portal back, and then exit and reset. So if you're doing it like that, you don't have to kill any of the bosses and you can do, uh, do it again and again. But if you don't have this portal unlocked, you can just kill the two first bosses. And this is also something you can do easily. I already covered all of that in a recent video, so I encourage you to go watch it if you want to learn a little bit more about these different routes. 
when it comes to the different items we're after so for this specific raid uh, we are after a few boes that can be very interesting you first have this cloth belt that is a unique appearance and this is part of the mage set so if a mage wants to complete the full set and get the achievement they will need this boe same with the Wallock set and these different boots. And finally, the best item from the raid is going to be this belt. This is from the Rogue set. And this is really the, the item we are after. So what I would recommend you to do is to have a like, lever class in order to do this uh, farm. Because only lever classes will be able to get the different lever BOEs. Also, you want to do it in Mythic mode. Because again, most people will buy it in Mythic mode. Of course, you can also try to do it in over difficulties because as you can see uh, the skin is a little bit different and still unique but really mythic should be your priority and you can of course also try to do it on a cloth class because you might be able to make some sales with these two over BOEs. and after that we're gonna have night hold from legion so night hold is another raid that is pretty good because you can farm some interesting transmog pieces so for this raid, I already covered it in another video, so I really encourage you to watch this video because it's a little bit long to explain uh, the different routes. But again, here it's very similar to the Hellfire Citadel. If you already unlocked part of the raid, you can use a portal and then you can really do it fast. Or if you haven't, you can just kill a few like of the different first bosses and then you can do the farm. Again, I encourage you to watch this video because I explain the three different routes very well in this one. So when it comes to the different like items you can get from this farm, uh, it's going to be mostly some caves. So you have all these different caves that are interesting because some of them have unique appearances. So as you can see, some of them really have like uh, some completely unique appearances. And what's good is that all the different items are different from one version to another. So in mythic mode, for instance, if you get this one, it will be this uh, appearance and if you get the same one in Eric it will be this appearance and then it's the same in normal and in LFR. After that we're gonna have a raid from Battle for Azeroth and this is the Battle for Dara Zalor. So this raid is pretty interesting because this is very similar to the Hellfire Citadel. Basically in Battle for Azeroth you had like one unique appearance set for each of the categories of armor. So for instance, there was one set for all the different cloth uh, classes, one for males, one for plates, and one for levers. And what's interesting is that the cloaks that are, that is part of the set for all the different cloth classes is a BOE from the raid. So basically, if someone that is like either a priest, a warlock, or a mage wants to complete the full appearance and get the achievement, they will need this BOE in order to do so. Uh, so this is really, I think, the best item you can get from this raid, but this is really worth it in my opinion. As you can see, the satellite is really good, the value is really good, and this is definitely something that a lot of people will buy in order to again finish their full set. After that, you have a lot of other items, but they are not that interesting. Uh, what I would recommend you to do for this one is again to do it in mythic mode and all you want to do is really enter the raid, kill all the mobs that are before the first boss and then exit and reset. After that we're gonna have one raid from Burning Crusade and this is Karazan. So Karazan is a very popular farm simply because you can get all the different world BOEs from the Burning Crusade. So in this farm, you will be able to get really some really cool uh, weapons, for instance, the Blade of Wizardry, uh, many other weapons, and also, of course, all the different patterns that can, again, sell for a lot of gold. So really, these are all the different items that we're after, and I just want to mention that these items are extremely rare, so it might take you a few runs or a lot of runs before even seeing one drop. So all you want to do is start uh, and go directly where Midnight is. You don't want to kill any of the bosses. So you want to kill all the mobs that are around Midnight. Then you want to take the stairs and arrive up. Up, you want to kill all the different mobs that are here. Then you want to go in the kitchen and kill all the mobs in the kitchen. Then you will enter the room where Moros is. Again, you don't want to kill the boss. You want to kill all the mobs that are here and all the mobs that are in the room next to it. Then you want to take the stairs and you will arrive just here. So here you can go and kill all the mobs that are around this part. 
then come back and kill all the mobs that are just before the maiden including in these little chambers and usually after that i personally just come back just here and exit the dungeon at the raid after that we're gonna have the sunwell plateau so the sunwell plateau is going to be very similar to karazhan um, and basically for this one all you want to do is enter kill all the mobs that are in the gardens then you want to go upstairs kill all the mobs that are around just before the first boss again you don't want to kill the boss and here you can use the method where you just like again create a group in the custom search you leave it and then you will be teleported outside and then you want to reset and do it again and again so this one again all we are after here are all the different items that you can then uh, sell on the auction house all the world boes so this includes all the different patterns and the different weapons also one thing important to mention is that you might get this weapon the stoppable force this is another gray weapon and this one is also used in order to craft another of these bubble worm from Shadowlands. So again, you want to either sell this item on the auction house or use it to craft the, uh, the pets. And like that, you will be able to make some extra gold. So after that, at number four, we're going to have all the different raids from BFA. And all these different raids are going to become really interesting in Dragonflight when it comes to raw gold farming. So right now, it's not the best because it's going to be pretty difficult for you to solo all these different raids. But when Dragonflight will be released and you will be level 70 and with a little bit of stuff, you will be able to solo all these different raids pretty easily. And these are probably going to be the best raids for raw gold farming. So I'm putting them at number four because I'm sure a lot of you are also interested in these different raw gold farms through the raids. And in my opinion, these are going to be the best ones. And what we're after are all the different armor pieces that drop from the different bosses. So of course, I would say, for instance, Uldir is going to be probably one of the best ones. Uh, same with Battle of Darazalor, even if this one sometimes can be a little bit longer. And finally, you have the two others. But Uldir is definitely going to be the place to go if you want to make some quick gold by vendoring all these armor pieces. After that, at number three, we're going to have Enterus from Legion. So for this raid, you have two choices. The first one is to enter the raid and just kill all the mobs that are before the first mob. And then you want to exit and reset. If you want to kill a little bit more mobs, you can kill the first boss. And then you want to kill all the different ads that are before all these other bosses. And like that, you will be able to make a little bit more gold. Again, if you want to just do it again and again and again, then avoid killing the first boss, just do it again and again, and you will have a chance at getting some of the items that we're after in this raid. So with this raid, basically, we are after all the different BOEs that have unique appearances. So this is very similar to the Hellfire Citadel. Uh, here, again, we have a lot of these like tier sets that will require you to get some of these BOEs. So these tier sets include, for instance, uh, the DK set with these different risk guards. You also have, for instance, the Druid set with these over uh, wrists. And then you have like a few more items, but then it's mostly going to be items that are useful for transmog purposes. The one that is the most famous and the like most valuable from this farm is going to be the Fell Flame Inferno Shoulder Pads. And these are the Monk's shoulders and as you can see only monks can actually get this item through another source any other lever class will need to get the bo in order to learn this appearance and this is the same with some of these items such as here here for these other uh, items so for this farm i would highly encourage you to do it either on like a lever class or on a plate class these are going to be the best and very similar to again all these other raids here you can do it in Mythic, this is probably going to be uh, the best one, but if you want to get other items uh, still unique, you can also do it in, for instance, Eric, Normal, um, and LFR. Again, it will be a little bit less interesting, but for instance, for the shoulders, they always have different colorations, so you might have still a lot of cells even with the different uh, versions. Even the one from LFR, as you can see, it's the violet one, and I'm sure you will be able to actually get these like shoulders to sell on the auction house for quite a lot of gold and now at number two we're gonna have another raid from legion and this time this is the tomb of sargeras so the tomb of sargeras is also extremely interesting again for the same reasons 
uh, you have a lot of different transmogs that have unique appearances and that are linked to some of the tier sets. So for this farm, all you want to do really is basically killing the three first bosses. So unfortunately, this is not really something you can do if you like don't kill any of the bosses. Then after you kill the three bosses, you just want to like jump in this pool of water after the third boss. And then you want to kill all the mobs that are before uh, this over boss. Then you want to go up, take the stairs. And you want to go inside this over part of the raid where you want to kill all the different mobs again. Then you want to go up the stairs on the over direction. Just be careful here when you go in these different like floors, you will have these purple pools and you don't want to step on it because otherwise you will be stunned for quite some time. After that, you really want to kill all the mobs, even the ones that are not hostile. So even the yellow ones. And you want to go on like to the top then you want to kill all the mobs here and then you want to go to this last little room where there is like more mobs and after that you can like simply leave uh by leaving the room you can open the door and leave the instance or you can just like you know log off and wait for the mobs to reappear so really this is something that you can do uh of course in mythic difficulty it's going to be the best but the different items can also be interesting in Eric and normal difficulty. So you can definitely decide to also each time just leave, do it then in Eric, leave and then doing it normal. Uh, you can also, of course, do it in LFR. And actually in LFR, you don't really have like this issue of having to wait. So you can really just queue for LFR, kill the mobs, then you can leave the group, queue again. And even if the boss won't drop any loot after that, the trash mobs might still get some loot. So this is also a possibility. So when it comes to the different items, there are really a lot that are interesting in this raid. Um, so when it comes to the unique appearances, we have, for instance, this pair of boots from the mage set. We have this belt from the monk set and also the boots for the monk set. Then we have this uh, belt for the warrior set, this belt for the priest set, and these boots for the death knight set. Then you also have like two other items that are very interesting because even if the main class here, Demon Hunters, can get this appearance by killing the normal bosses. If you are any other level class, you will need this BOE in order to get uh, this appearance. And this is a pretty cool appearance. And same with the Paladin's Helm. So all these items are really interesting. And again, they just have different colorations uh, for the different difficulties. So you might want to do it also in Eric and Normal mode. Uh, so really, as you can see, the best items are going to be the plate ones. So I would recommend you to do it on the plate character first to try and get all these different plate items. And then, of course, lever is going to be the second best one. And finally, cloth. Here again, like you don't want to do it on a male character because all these items are not unique and you can get them by just killing the bosses. And finally, at number one, we're going to have the first raid of Dragonflight, the Vault of the Incarnate. So, of course, this is not something that you can do right now, but you will soon have access to this raid. And with this raid, you will be able to farm some BOEs that I'm sure will sell for a lot of gold. So it hasn't been really confirmed yet uh, what were going to be the different BOEs. Blizzard confirmed that they will have BOEs in the raid. I'm pretty sure that these BOEs are going to be the following ones, uh, but again, it will have to be confirmed. But definitely, I think this is going to be a very interesting way to make some gold in Dragonflight. And again, all these items will sell extremely fast for probably like a lot of gold. So definitely, this is something that I will put on top of my list. Um, and yeah, hopefully it will be a good farm to do in Dragonflight. So that's going to be pretty much it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed and I really hope you will be able to make some gold with these different raids. I will be back very soon with more guides and more videos. And in the meantime, I wish you all a great weekend. Bye.